here with more. Former White House physician who called for Joe Biden to take a cognitive test, Congressman Ronnie Jackson. He was a White House physician for both President Obama and President Trump, along with California Congressman Devin Nunes. Uh, doctor, Congressman, let me start with you and, and talk about the cognitive side of things. Donald Trump took that cognitive test. You told me that he passed it with a perfect score, 30 of 30. You told me it's a hard exam. You told me that you want Joe Biden to take one. What has been the response? None. I haven't heard a single thing, Sean. And you're right. This is not a laughing matter anymore. I've been saying this ever since he was candidate candidate Biden. And, uh, you know, we, we have to know what's going on at this particular point. It's sad. What a bunch of hypocrites. You showed on TV, we had the, the far left, the, the liberal mainstream media, all the self-appointed elites in academic medicine demanding, demanding that President Trump have a cognitive test just because they didn't like the nature of his tweets, not because of any cognitive issues whatsoever. Now they're completely ignoring this. And it's sad. We're being tested, just like you said, every day we're being tested, whether it's Iran or China or Hamas. Uh, or you know, or Russia, whatever it is, we're being tested on the on the on the national and global stage every single day, and he's failing miserably. And it, it really is at this point, we got to figure out what's going on. I feel I feel bad, Sean, because the White House has been transformed from a symbol of power and authority into what looks like at this particular point an assisted living facility, and the American people. Are, they are, they're going to start demanding at some point in the very near future that we know what's going on. It's already starting to happen, and we need to know. 57% doctor think that somebody else is in charge in the White House, including 58% of independents and a third of Democrats think that he's not making the decisions. Uh, how, does a, how does a country function if the president's incapable of performing his duties? That's what the poll says. My personal poll... Everybody I talk to talks about it. Yeah. Well, Sean, we can't. We can't function. I mean, we're spending money like it's going out of style right now. We at least need to know that our commander in chief, our head of state, and our president knows what's going on in that regard. And then on a world stage, we're failing miserably. He's not inspiring confidence in the American people. He's not inspiring confidence in our allies. And he's sending the absolute wrong message to our adversaries. Our adversaries are taking advantage of us. We draw a line in the sand, he, they cross the line. He draws another line, they cross the line. That did not happen in the Trump administration. When President Trump drew a line in the sand, our enemies and our adversaries knew they knew they knew exactly what would happen if they crossed that line, and we don't have that anymore. And we're gonna we're gonna pay a price for it. You know, a, a Congressman Nunes, the geopolitical um, territorial ambitions of China seem to seem to be at no end here. We see what they're outlining of plans for Taiwan. We've seen the crackdown in Hong Kong. Uh, we see that they partnered with the Russians to arm the Iranians so they can fight their proxy wars in the Middle East. That's a dangerous trifecta in my mind. Uh, as you look at these now, and, and then now Joe grants a waiver for Putin to build the pipeline while simultaneously canceling our pipeline, the Keystone XL pipeline. Can you explain any of this? And, and how nervous are you as a member of the House Intel Committee? Well, I think I can explain it, Sean. The way that I look at this is, is that you have a Pravda-style media in this country that the Democrats control. And then you run that through a filter, which are the social media companies, and it makes it easy to govern as long as you're doing it in the United States. So you run a campaign, you hide in your basement, you don't answer any tough questions. The same thing happens here in the United States. He's been snapping at his own press people that they control. And that's even when they're giving him cards to try to tell him how to answer certain questions. But here's the problem. Putin knows exactly how this works. He's a former KGB guy. He runs his press in his country. The same, with pre the same thing with President Xi. He does the same thing with the Chinese Communist Party propaganda that's all throughout the globe. So when he sits down with these people, they laugh at him because they know his cognitive de decline. They're probably some of the only people that get to sit one-on-one -on -one with him, like Putin got to for an hour or two. You know, very few members of Congress have even, even sat down with him for any length of time. So I guess the way I would explain it is, is that when you get out to the real world where people will kill others, they will take over companies, they will, they will take over economies, Things get real. Biden and let the me Democrats take it to, just let can't me take this question in another direction. If 57% of the American people in this Trafalgar poll, Robert Cahaley is a great pollster, 
if the 57 percent don't think he's in charge, and then you add to the equation that social media is not showing the video clips that we just showed and that we've been showing, um, I would argue that the number would be dramatically higher, except <laughs> you have big yeah. tech and the media mob not showing their audiences what's really going on when the struggles he's really having. They're protecting him. That, no, that is exactly right. And that's why I keep bringing the, the attention of the American people to how big tech is really the, big, the biggest danger to our democracy right now is not only the problem media, but it's also coupled with big tech. And a lot of people think Republicans are going to have a great year next year. And I, I think we are. We're recruiting candidates across the country. We're doing a great job. We're getting phenomenal people that are standing up to run like Dr. Jackson did in the last, in the last Congress, in the last campaign. But you're right. I think if the social media companies weren't covering up Biden tripping going up Air Force One, uh, his the whispering no, thing, Congress that weird be whispering fair. deal that he did a couple be weeks fair. ago. You're being unfair. The wind blew him over not once, not twice, three times. That's what they said. It was a very windy day. Yeah. yeah. we got to be fair. But then also explain the, the, the strange whispering deal. The strange whispering thing, if, if Donald Trump or, or, or I did that, I mean, you, or, or if you did that, We'd be mocked from now to the end of time. It would be like the old, uh, the old uh, misspelling Con of potato with Vice President Dan Quayle. It would never end. What, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, very strange indeed. Uh, and uh, it's, I'm serious. I'm, I, I'm not going to call him Sippy Cup anymore because, it, honestly, I'm very worried. This is not a joke anymore. Congressman Jackson, thank you. Congressman Devin joke. Nunes, thank you. Now, hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.